Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is about the Razorblade Gaming Notebook. This 0.8-inch thin gaming notebook with a 17-inch screen weighs less than 3 kilograms and Razer believes is the best option for truly portable gaming. <laughs> Now with any gaming notebook, a lot of the focus is going to be on the specs. So the Razer Blade uses a dual core Intel Core i7 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, a GT 555M graphics card, and it also has a 256 gig SSD that serves both as a boot drive and as mass storage due to its massive size. It also runs Windows 7 Home Premium and comes with zero bloatware. That is zero extra antivirus software that you didn't want pre-installed on your computer and you're just going to spend time Time removing it. That's what gamers want, a lean, mean, bloatware-free machine. Now there is no denying that this is a beautiful machine. The aluminum unibody design aids with the rigidity of it, the beauty of it, as well as heat dissipation. So we've got a reasonably powerful CPU and GPU here in spite of the form factor. So there's not a lot of room for big heat sinks and you have to use that aluminum unibody as one big heat sink. Now the bottom of the unit has a couple small ventilation holes but is otherwise very, very clean. On the top of the screen, we see that we've got again, Beautiful, plain aluminum, and then a gorgeous Razer logo illuminated right in the middle. The screen itself is full 1080p. This is a 17-inch screen, and it is LED backlit. You also have a sound bar underneath it that provides sound, and around the, again, aluminum bezel, you've got a small pinhole for a webcam. Now, where things really start to get interesting is on the interface. So you've got a green LED backlit keyboard that is, has a fairly ideal layout, other than maybe a slightly shortened backspace, I give it the old thumbs up. It looks really good to me. And finally, the revolutionary Razer Switchblade interface off to the right. 10 fully programmable buttons with each with individual LCD screens behind them. So you can program not only the functionality, but also the image that is displayed on them. You can put whatever you want, as well as their multi-touch touchpad that also can fully display whatever you please behind it as well. So you can set it to a custom image depending on the application you launch. You can set it to whatever you want. You can even run YouTube videos on it as well. In terms of I.O., We've also got on the side two USB 2.0 ports, one USB 3.0 port, HDMI out, gigabit ethernet, as well as audio in. And on the other side, past the exhaust vents, we've got a Kensington lock to make sure that no one runs off with your switchblade if you have it secured down. In terms of the travel weight, the small power adapter really helps with keeping this thing very, very portable. Now, of course, in day-to-day -day applications with its Core i7 processor, dual core with hyperthreading, as well as its ample supply of RAM, 256 gig SSD, the Razer Blade is not gonna have any trouble keeping up. However, when it comes to gaming, some gamers would argue that the GT550M is too much of a compromise to make and still call it a gaming notebook. But to counter that argument, I would say, well, consider the design choices Razer made in the design of it. So they're going for an innovative interface, a palatable, form factor, a beautiful aesthetic, as well as portability. It weighs less than three kilograms, which is as much as a kilogram plus less than a 17 inch gaming notebook that does have more horsepower under the hood. So is that a trade off you're willing to make? It's up to you. However, just as an example, I wanted to show you guys the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim running at 1080p on high, the high preset, and we are getting 30 FPS. This is a very playable experience. And if you're running more mainstream games, such as Diablo 3 or League of Legends, you're going to have an even better gaming experience. If you're willing to tweak the settings, you should do all right. So what I'd love for you guys to do is tweet me at Linus Tech, or leave a comment under the video. Let me know what you think. Is the trade-off good enough? Would you take the portability? Would you take the graphics card? I want to hear from you guys. So thank you for checking out this review of the Razer Blade from Razer on NCIX Tech Tips, and don't forget to subscribe.